Well, here I am in splendid isolation. I've got myself for company. I think I've done everything. Turned on the lights, cameras, pressed record. And, oh, wait. That's better. Okay, roll titles. Somebody, roll titles. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Graham Norton. Is this the Graham Norton Show? Well, it's as close as we can get it. Uh, to all our viewers here and around the world, welcome. Whether, you know, you're just having a normal Friday night in, you're trying to watch while doing some lockdown sunbathing, you spent all day setting up a swing for the kids, or you're a mom in Manchester who can't get out of the shops and is used to out-of-date tanning lotion. Have you seen this? How do I look? Wicked. <laughs> Whatever you're up to, you're all very welcome. Now, obviously, there's no studio audience, but there is an audience. You. You sat at home. So uh, when I introduce the guests and things, I would urge you, why don't you stand up, give them a round of applause. Like they're key workers. Like what they do matters. Okay, prepare your hands to clap, because look who's first up on my virtual couch. <gasps> It is singing superstar Michael Bublé. Hello. Hey, Graham. How are you? I'm good. I'm guessing from your T-shirt that you're in Vancouver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In Vancouver. Uh, I've been uh, sent to the basement. This is our, our little basement thing. So my wife said, go down there and do what you have to do. <laughs> <laughs> but I like that you're not just kind of, kind of you know, sitting in your house waiting for this to be over. You're being productive. Uh, so what do you, do you do a show every day? Monday to Friday, Lou and I, uh, my wife and I go and do a little, it's a show. It's just so half-assed, man. But it's uh, <laughs> really, uh, it's just a way for us to, uh, to be connected, to connect. To my wife, uh, we shoot it from her phone. She sets up her phone, which is, she goes off her Instagram. And then I go off my Facebook live. And we put our phones together. And we just sit and shoot, the sh just talk and, and talk about our favorite TV shows. Uh, you know, it's always Graham Norton, number one. Oh, and, of course. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk about YouTube stuff and, and Netflix specials and the Tiger King. And we'll just, you know, we'll just go and, you know, we'll have different people come out. Like I have a, a, a girlfriend of mine who's the, uh, my kid's grade one teacher. And she came on to talk about how teachers feel and what you can do at home to help your kid just little things you know are you doing the whole you're doing homeschooling as well you're doing all of that i'm yeah i'm doing i'm doing the homeschooling and i'm not great at it i'm terrible at it but you know what we each day we're learning how to, we're adapting you know and we're learning new things and i learned that even though i felt guilty about them watching their ipad or television i just mute the screen and turn on subtitles and it's like they're reading so <laughs> I'm these are great I'm tips. Two birds. These, these are yeah. great tips. Yes. <laughs> and what's the story? Because uh, obviously, you know, you are this kind of you. You were in the middle of this big tour, so that mm. all stops. Uh, is there? Yeah. Do you? Are you planning to pick it up again? How does it work? Do you reschedule everything, or is everything cancelled? What's the story? Well, n not much different than when you know we went through our own family health scare. It, very quickly, you you know, the work really loses its meaning. And, and it, for me, it was just, listen, doing the right thing was, there was only one option. And so uh, I was I was one of the very early ones. I think uh, I was one of the earliest artists that had sort of pulled the plug. And I felt horrible. I didn't, I knew I was going to make up the shows. I never canceled. I was going to, I'll always make up these shows. I'll end up wherever I was supposed to be. I'll just do it whenever we can. But uh, I, I felt bad for like the promoters who got killed. They just got killed by it. So I didn't want them to lose their shirts. So I made sure that I would, um, I would reschedule. And when, when we're all feeling safe about it, that I would get back to doing it. Like the day, the day they tell us, okay, we're good, I will be on stage. Oh, wow. Uh, God bless you, Michael Bublé. And thank you very much for uh, <laughs> popping into our world and cheering us all up. And uh, good luck with the shows. I would look forward to seeing you uh, in the flesh as soon as possible. Thank you, Ed. Stay safe and all you beautiful people stay safe out there. All right, Johnny. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 
Right, up next, Breeders is a Sky original comedy. It airs on Thursdays at 10. And it depicts the challenges of parenting, warts and all. Before I talk to its stars, Martin Freeman and Daisy Haggard, here's a clip. Martin Freeman and Daisy Haggard join me now. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Are you going out later, Martin? <laughs> Baby, this is for you. <laughs> oh, thank you for making the effort. I'm uh, never, Daisy... I'm never going to come on your show and not dress up. Oh, that's Neither very kind of you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been in that outfit for about two weeks, Daisy? I, I basically have. I did wash it for you, though, so I smell <laughs> lovely, just so you know. <laughs> I'm that's very kind of you. Hot. I'm already regretting it. I'm really hot. <laughs> OK. You, you, can, you can take the mouth off if you want. There you go. Oh, there you go. Oh, hair model's own. Oh, <laughs> work it. Um, now, I've, I've been really enjoying Breeders, but I was kind of surprised by it because I thought it was going to be a kind of cuddly family mm. comedy. And mm. it's not that, is it? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's really not that. I think we, I think we, we thought there was just room in the, in the world for uh, a comedy that was still a comedy, but was quite sort of dark and quite um, unflinching, I suppose, about the harder parts of being not only a, a parent, but being in a family situation. So as you were all, all your sort of close relationship. But the language in the show I mean, is really, you know, even for an old lag like me, I kind of think that's quite strong. Uh, yeah. How did you manage to film? Because obviously they're, they are real children and apparently you're not supposed to swear in front of them. Apparently you're not. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah no, there, there are quite strict guidelines uh, as far as swearing in front of children is concerned, as, the, as there should be, obviously, just not in of my Of course. Head. But, uh, but yeah, at work there should be. Um, and so there would be different script sides. So that so if me and Daisy have a scene together, with, you know, with the kids, all the swear words will be replaced by something a bit more mild so that the kids will never read scripts with bad words in. And so we will we'll do the kind of mild version in front of the kids. And then when the kids have done their coverage, they will go off with little headphones on into an adjacent room and me and Daisy will say all the sweary lines as written. Apparently, Daisy, you struggled with some of the alternatives. Yes, because they're so they turn the script into something so surreal that I got completely giggly and could barely do it. So, like, rather than cock ring, it was clock ring. I don't know why that got me so much. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do that. Then it was fudge and sit. You can work these all out yourself. I don't know. <laughs> well, also, presumably the children knew what you were supposed to be saying. I, well, I, actually, it was quite surreal, wasn't it, Martin? I don't know. Yeah, it was, yeah. I th no, I think some, and sometimes, of course, they knew it's a sweary show. They, they know yeah. that there was some very grown-up words in it. And I think that they sort of delighted in being able to be, you know, occasionally we would let one, you know, I happen to swear, Daisy swears quite a lot, I swear a lot. And, uh, and occasionally we do, you know, the children definitely did hear some swear words, but their, their mums were very forgiving of us. Yeah. yeah. And weirdly, of course, this show Breeders, it's taken on a kind of different resonance now because so many people are stuck at home with their kids. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, in, in what is quite an unnatural way, you know, like uh, people who, even people who love each other aren't used to being this close with each other all the time. So, so it's quite an interesting time. I mean, my, my kids are in a, a different stage to, to Daisy's. I mean, mine can be less hands-on, you know, like they're, they're doing their own thing at the moment, whereas Daisy's need attention a bit more. Than yeah, mine are two and five, and it's just this sort of terrifying thing as they get more and more bored and they look around the house and they're seeing it as some sort of terrifying playground. Yeah. Uh, where you're just going, you cannot hurt yourself. We are not going to hospital. Please, please, yeah, please yeah. be safe. <laughs> well, you say that, Daisy, but then okay. I think on day one of homeschooling, you built them this. Oh, no. Like, no. That, <laughs> that does not that, look safe. That is my husband's <laughs> invention, and I can't bear it, but we put the teddies on it. Uh, but that, but yeah, it's so frightening. I know. I, had, I took a photo of it. <laughs> his invention, we, it's all his fault. But they are fine. <laughs> What's going on in this one? Because oh, why God. are they staring at the pot plant? A spider died. We found a dead spider and I thought, that's half an hour. That is half an hour. <laughs> I've got to bleach the fridge. That's amazing. So I was like, this is a really big deal, guys. And then I was like, I'm trying to teach them not to be scared of bugs because I don't want girls that are like, ooh, about bugs. So I was like, let's, this is an amazing spider. They were, then they got really upset and I had to sort of backtrack a bit because they were like, oh my gosh, the spider. <laughs> um, so then they like FaceTime their aunt and uncle to talk about this terrible tragedy. But anyway, we did a funeral. It, took, it, was, it was useful. Wow. It was half an hour and I bleached the fridge. 
And for, for fear that anyone thinks you're not actually educating your children, you are doing real lessons. I am you, posted, you posted this one. This was, a, an, I don't, which, which daughter was this? Oh my gosh, yes, that's Elsie, she's five. What was the lesson? It was writing a sentence, and a funny, a funny se sentence. What is it? The pig likes to fart, isn't it? Well, it's the pig licks to fart. Oh, licks to fart, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We well, all... it does, Graham. <laughs> Um, and uh, Daisy, you know I'm a, a huge fan of Back to Life, and I believe Back to Life is still that's all up on iPlayer right now, right? It is, yes, it is. Have you have you filmed series two? Is that in the can now? No, I am trying to write that now, as well, um, in these circumstances. So that's fun. They sit on my lap and they tend to take over my script and write lots of um, things that I have to delete afterwards, like <laughs> just stuff like that. Or well, the pig licks the fart. It's quite and, a good line. I mean, that's probably going to go in. That's like, that's gold. Well, look, thanks for joining me. Uh, stay safe, stay sane. Uh, Breeders continues on Sky One. It's also available on Sky On Demand and the streaming service Now TV. Martin and Daisy, bye-bye. Thanks, Graham. Bye. Now, Daisy isn't the only parent dealing with homeschooling. Up and down the land, parents are doing it uh, with mixed results. Uh, there's a mother in Suffolk. She set some uh, work for her children. Now, the girl, we sort of know her. She does well in class. She's not entirely confident her mother is qualified to be teaching. Here's the poem work. Do pirates still exist today? <laughs> no. How do you know? Because I know everything. She then gave the same homework to the little brother, who obviously looked to his sister. Do pirates still exist today? No. How do you know? Because my sister is clever and she knows and because I have never seen one. Oh, by the way, if you're watching in Somalia, we do know those answers are incorrect. Now, another fun thing to do is art projects. You know, and you just use things you find around the house, like, I don't know, uh, lipstick. <laughs> hey, it's fine, they tested on animals. Hey, here's another fun thing you could do at home. Uh, why not get your kid to draw an outline of an ordinary household object? Like, this scissors, say, it'd be fun, right? Off you go, son. <gasps> Good job, nailed it. Uh, gents, you may wince when you watch the child cutting this out. <laughs> careful, boy, careful. Homeschoolers, I salute you. Right, my next guest. He plays the part of Chris Tarrant, the host of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, in the new ITV drama Quiz, which tells the true story of Major Charles Ingram and his coughing friends who tried to cheat their way to a million pounds. Here's a clip. And Michael Sheen is here now. Hello, Michael. Hello, Graham. How are you doing? I'm very well. Where did we find you in lockdown? Uh, I am in uh, a house uh, <laughs> in Wales. OK. And now, obviously, we're all facing our own challenges in lockdown, but mm. you have quite a new baby there, don't you? Uh, apparently, yes. There is somewhere in this house quite a new baby. You may even hear it. <laughs> I can give that, way, uh, that much away. Uh, you may hear her at any point. Um, yeah, she is sort of off here and she will be giving sound effects later on. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I like it. It gives, it gives the interview sort of tension, waiting, yes. waiting for a baby to cry. Anything uh, could happen at any moment. <laughs> uh, now, Michael Chin, you have a reputation for playing real people. Obviously, you played uh, Tony Blair, David Frost, Brian Clough, uh, Kenneth Williams. Uh, what were the challenges of creating Chris Tarrant? Um, well, in a way, all those other ones that you mentioned <laughs> were either the uh, the lead. A baby, character. you say? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, everyone's a critic. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, all the ones you mentioned tended to be either the lead character in the piece or the co-lead character. <clears throat> Whereas in this in this uh, in quiz, uh, it's the Ingrams that are the main characters. So Chris Tarrant is a sort of supporting character, really. But you still have to do just as much work because you know it all. All it takes is one scene for people to go nothing like him. <laughs> so you still got to put as much work in. So that was quite a challenge, you know, not having as much to play with. Um, and also, uh, you know, I got to watch Chris Tarrant doing the show, doing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. But the thing that's most useful usually when I'm playing a real character is to get sort of footage of them when they're just being themselves, you know. So I tried to find interviews with Chris Tarrant. There's not as many as there are episodes of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. So I just watched and watched and watched. And he is amazing at doing what he did. He sort of makes it look very easy, but it is absolutely brilliant what he did. So I, found, I did find it fascinating. And of course, I, I watched him so much. I'd never met him in real life. Um, and I watched him so much. You do sort of become slightly, you have a weird relationship to the person 
never having met them. And then I did meet him. I bumped into him not long after I'd finished filming um, at uh, the Pride of Britain Awards. And I was just, I was having a photograph taken or something. And I heard this voice behind me going, looks nothing like me. And I turned around and there's Chris Tarrant, <laughs> which is a very odd feeling when you meet someone, not only, I mean, it's odd when you meet famous people anyway, but when yeah. you meet someone you've been obsessively watching for so long, it's a very peculiar thing. So would you like to have a go now? Could you give us a, treat us to a little bit of, of Chris doing the show? All right, I'll just, uh, I'll do what Mike Yarwood used to do. <laughs> Hello, Graham, it's Chris Tarrant here from Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Uh, so, first up, uh, let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> Someone's had too much time in lockdown. <laughs> so, Graham, you're uh, from Ireland. You're a TV radio presenter, a writer, a novelist, I believe, and a raconteur, it says here. So, uh, let's have no more delay and first question. <laughs> How many sonnets did William Shakespeare write? Now that's sonnets, not plays. Sonnets. How many sonnets did William Shakespeare write? Is it A. 62 B. 84 C. 112 or D. 154. Uh, Shakespeare, I'm not very good on Shakespeare. Is there any chance, can I use my phone a friend? Oh, you've got option? your lifelines, you've got your lifelines, Graham. You've got your, uh, ask the audience, which I wouldn't try. Uh, no. I've got your, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to ask the audience. You've got your 50 50, uh, or you've got your phone a friend. I'll tell you what, I'll phone a friend. Uh, now, people who know Shakespeare, uh, now, we've either got Ian McKellen or Judy Dench. I'm going with Judy Dench. Here we go. Oh, put on speaker, put on speaker. Is she in? We don't know. She better be. Hello. Sorry I'm not here at the moment <laughs> to take your call, but if you'd be kind enough just to leave a name and a... Hello. Hello, Judy Dent. How, how, Hello. It's Graham Norton here. Very, very nice to hear you. And how are you coping, uh, Judy Dent? Well, you know, um, day to day, doing a bit of this and that. Mostly this. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, I'm just kind of uh, thinking, what can, waking up and thinking, what can I do today? OK, well, what I'm doing, for no good reason, yes. is playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> You're very bold. Uh, so, I've got a question. Here's the question. Okay. okay. So the question is, how many sonnets did Shakespeare write? I'll give you the answer straight away because that's what I'm trying to do, is learn the sonnets. It's 154, Graham. I've, how many have you learned? Oh, about six. <laughs> 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 I've, got a bit, I've got a bit... I'm, I'm, I'm planning on having quite a lot to do. <laughs> So you are certain it's 154? Yes, it's, it's 154. All right, thank you so much, Judy. Uh, Very good, good luck. Oh, thank you so much. And good luck to you in the, in the rest of the lockdown. And we'll see you in the flesh very soon, I hope. Hopefully. All right. Okay. Much love. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Uh, OK, she sounds very confident. Uh, so I am going to go with D, 154. That's the answer you go for, Greg? Yes. For a million pounds. Yeah. It's the correct answer! Oh! You won! 154! Well done, Graham! Amazing! Well done! Thank you so much for doing that, Michael. Uh, quiz. It's on ITV uh, Easter Monday at 9pm and then three consecutive nights. Uh, a pleasure, Michael. Back to your baby. See you soon. Bye-bye. 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 OK. Uh, before we hear our first virtual Red Chair stories of the series, it's time for music. Uh, this singer, before she even released her first album, has already won a Brit Award earlier this year and was named BBC Sound of 2020. Now she's agreed to perform in her very own hoose. It's Celeste. Hello, Celeste. Thank you. Yay. Celeste. Uh, I wish I had more hands. I wish I had more hands, Celeste. Thank you so much <laughs> Thank for you doing that. Much. That was gorgeous. 
And this, that beautiful song, Strange, that is on the debut album. Now, it has the date, it was coming out in September, I think. Yeah, that was the original plan. Um, we're, <laughs> we're going to be slightly delayed because of all these things that are going on, just because of like the physical side of things, like being in a studio, I record a lot of my band, and so we can't all go in there because there's usually about six or seven of us in the studio. Um, but you can pre-order it. At the moment, it's self-titled. It's just Celeste on, um, you know, all the different places. You can usually find music. And I'll probably name it something else later on in the year when it actually comes out. Oh, well, I hope people do pre-order because it's so important that we support uh, artists and musicians and people right now. Uh, Celeste, thank you so much for doing that performance and giving up your bedroom to us. Uh, we'll see you again. Thank Mwah. You Celeste, so good night. OK, the time has come for Red Chairs. Uh, now, we're on a different time, so if you've never seen the show before, this is the item where someone comes on and attempts to tell uh, a story of the most interesting or the funniest thing that has ever happened in their life. That's the theory. In reality, it tends to be people from New Zealand who've shat themselves. Uh, let's see if a global pandemic has improved the quality of the story. Uh, who's up first? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Sonia. 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 Yeah. And where are you, Sonia? I'm in Montreal. Oh, <gasps> a Canadian, ladies and gentlemen. An art-loving Canadian. Did yeah. you paint that picture yourself? Which picture? The one on the wall behind you? That's a painting by my uncle. <laughs> OK. Yeah. <laughs> it, so, it's, um... it's not a picture, it's a painting. I'm an idiot. OK, Sonia, <laughs> off you go with your story. <laughs> OK, so this is years back. I was a teenager. Um, I had a pet ferret. Her name was Susie. She was a beautiful little ferret. Mm -hmm. And my brother had taught her to climb up his pant, or his trouser leg, I should say. And come Very good. His... You yeah. know, entertain yourself. I'm from northern Quebec, a small mining town. So, you know, having a ferret up your trousers, you know. Make your own fun. Exactly. But so one day we got robbed. And so we had a policeman show up at the door and he was chatting with my mum. And then I think the next minute happens kind of in slow motion in my memory because we saw the ferret walk into the room. We saw the ferret see the policeman. My brother and I looked at each other and we saw the ferret see the policeman. The ferret ran up his trouser <laughs> leg. <laughs> and then of course she knew the trick. The trick was get out through the fly. But the policeman <laughs> didn't know <laughs> what was in his trousers and he just felt some kind of animal running in circles, looking for the exit. Um, so my brother and I, very concerned for the well-being of our ferret, were just saying like, open your fly, open your fly. <laughs> and he would not. So he was completely freaking out. Enough now. He managed no, because it was a very good story. Very, very good story, strong story. But it, it, it was a weak finish, I felt. It was, <laughs> I felt it peaked about two thirds of the way through. Uh, do we have another one? Hello. Hello there. Hello, uh, what's your name? Catherine. Catherine. And where are you, Catherine? Southampton. Oh, okay. I was sort of hoping for global. But there you go. South Southampton's no. good. <laughs> and what do you do at Southampton, Catherine? I work in the nursing team at a GP surgery down here for the NHS. Oh, okay. So is a, a GP surgery kind of less under pressure or is it a bit calmer for you guys than the hospitals? About the same. About the same. Okay. Well, thank you very much for, uh, <laughs> for doing this. It's very kind of you. OK, Catherine, off you go with your story. OK, so a few years ago, I was at an ex's family wedding. Oh, yeah. So we were all outside for the group pictures and the boys were at the back and the girls were at the front. So I put my hands behind my back and squeezed and groped my ex-partner's cock and balls. Okay. And she's a nurse, everyone. She's a nurse. What I didn't realize was because my ex partner was best man, that he had moved places with his dad. <laughs> so essentially, what I was doing is stood in a field on a really hot summer's day, squeezing my ex father in law's penis and testicles. <laughs> Catherine, I like that story. I think you can walk. <laughs> walk, off you go. Yay! Yay! Yeah, I can walk. Yeah, no, so yeah that's what walk. happened to me. Walk. Walk. Oh, walk, sorry. Bye. <laughs>
kind of glad she's not in the studio. Okay, that's it. Uh, that is all we've got time for, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to join us uh, from anywhere in the world and tell your red chair story, you can. You just contact us at this very address. Uh, that's it for tonight. Please join us again next week for more of the same. Same time, same place.